Welcome to Tiny Piano Club. This winter-spring season, TPC is releasing a new series of videos called Campus Canvas Challenge. What is it? Campus refers to a place. Here at Lutheran Campus Ministry at CU Boulder, we'll primarily be using the University of Colorado. You might go to a school or college with a physical campus. However, you could use other campuses such as your church, a park, an art center, a gym, a grocery store, or even an empty but well-lit parking lot. A canvas is one medium artists might paint on to create a masterpiece, such as Vincent van Gogh, Starry Night, or Leonardo da Vinci, the Mona Lisa, or even a 10-year-old Megan Sawyer, colorful kitten. So, campus canvassing is essentially making art in a place. How is this even related to ministry? Funny thing is, art and theology have so much to do with each other, some might even say they are one and the same. Art is a way to express some sort of truth held by an artist in some kind of form. This could be an experience, a mood, a social statement, an announcement, or more. This content is expressed in a piece of art in order to portray the full meaning that an artist intended. People can explain works of art in words, but descriptions fall short of expressing the full meaning or have the same effect on someone as the actual piece of art. The intended meaning of a piece of art could be exactly what the viewers experience. Other times, the meaning might be completely different for the artist and each viewer. All of the experiences the art creates for different people are real, so there is no right or wrong. There is just art, with its expression of truth meant to be seen, thought about, and experienced. Theology is the study of God. The thing is, we don't really know exactly what God means. Most of the time when we do theology, we are struggling to find the words for a truth for which there are no words. One word just won't do it, so we end up with lots and lots and lots and lots of words. More than anything else, Lutheran Christians think theology is about experience. We experience water at baptism, and we eat and drink together at communion. Doing public theology is about creating and inviting people into an experience of some great truth. It's no wonder that so many of history's great pieces of art have a theological dimension. Ever heard of the pyramids? They're tombs to protect dead kings so that they have a good afterlife. How about them Greeks creating statues of their gods and goddesses and building temples dedicated to them? And when Buddhism crept through China, Korea, and Japan, they built very nice statues of the Buddha. Then there's that time when all of Europe was basically Christian and so reflects their art and architecture of churches, statues of saints, and painted depictions of books in the Bible. Even today, many traditional practices and rituals can be seen as performance art. So, the way I see it, art is really just tangible bits of theology. The purpose of Campus Canvas Challenge is to show you some interactive art slash theology projects and then challenge you to create them on your own campus. You could keep them the same or change them, whatever fits your context. Side note, if you have an original idea for a Campus Canvas Challenge, email us. We'd love to hear about it. The first challenge was created by students who attended the Lutheran Student Movement Gathering in Chicago, Illinois. It involves paint, feet, a labyrinth, and lots of t-shirts. The main art piece, or tangible bit of theology, as I like to call it, is a prayer labyrinth. And who better to tell us more than local expert, the Reverend Dr. K. Cook. I am Kay Cook. I am an Episcopal priest, and I am a labyrinth um, facilitator. And I took my training uh, at Shark Cathedral from Lauren Archeris. What's so beautiful and what's so interesting about the labyrinth is that it's ancient. Cutting across all cultures, all historical time periods, they, you will find labyrinth patterns on cave drawings, uh, ancient, ancient cave, cave drawings. Uh, around Stonehenge, you find those uh, ancient 
uh, patterns. One of our earliest labyrinths is uh, 12th century at the Cathedral in Chartres. There is a labyrinth in the floor of Chartres Cathedral and it has never changed from the 12th century. It's been there for that long. What's really important is to distinguish a labyrinth from uh, a maze. Uh, a maze is, for example, if you've seen The Shining, is a maze is where you go in and, and you can get lost and you don't know your way and that's part of the thrill of doing the maze. The labyrinth is a definite pattern and so you can't get lost on it. You will always find yourself ending up at the center. There are several different patterns. Uh, what uh, the one I was referring to at Shark Cathedral is called the Shart pattern. And it's the same pattern we have at St. Aidan's of the Shart. And it is, uh, it, it is very much the, the winding path that you will take and then you will make a turn and you come back around and then you make another turn and you circle and you keep coming back and forth until you reach the center. There is also the Cretan one and um, the, um, the, and it's called the Cretan Labyrinth because it was found on the island of Crete. You know, it's very, very ancient. And it is more of a taking a circle and just cir circling around and around until you enter up into the, it, until you enter into the center. From there, you will see, I could have this wonderful book where you see what people have done with those patterns. You will find one in a square, or you will find uh, beautiful ones out in the woods that people have created from stones. Then you can take rocks, you can take wood, you can take t-shirts, and uh, whatever you have, whatever you have available, and uh, create your labyrinth. In Boulder, for example, you will find a labyrinth at Boulder Community Hospital. The labyrinth is very near the Cancer Treatment Center. Uh, encourages people um, as they're waiting for their chemotherapy, after their chemotherapy, if they're able, or, or as they are waiting for a loved one who is undergoing surgery, that walking that labyrinth is again getting in that beautiful space where you're able to put those concerns about your health um, and about your loved one's health, where you're able to hand those over into the spiritual world and hand those over to God. And, um, and it, it is um, it's just an utterly, beautifully calming experience. Labyrinth at Shard, for example, if you could not do the journey to Jerusalem during Holy Week, then the labyrinth would be that journey. So the, the point was that you know we reach the center of the labyrinth, we reach Jerusalem. What it means to get to Jerusalem is you get to the center of the labyrinth, is to get to the holy place symbolically to reach the holy place of the crucifixion and resurrection, the very center of our Christian belief. And it means that we have made, as, as if you were making the journey to Jerusalem itself, it means that we have reached that spiritual, we have been in contact, we have touched that spiritual part of ourselves. Getting to the center of the labyrinth is getting to a center of a very sacred place, not only on our grounds where we have dedicated that labyrinth, but to a very sacred place within yourself. People in the center of the labyrinth, and you, you're always invited to stay, to pray, to contemplate, to meditate in the center, and people find often that it's very difficult to leave that center and to go back out because we begin that journey inward. You know, literally, the journey inward is a journey inward, a spiritual journey. To begin the path out, because you go back the way you came, and to begin the path out, you're dedicating your spiritual experience to get coming back into the world. And, and you feel so protected and so warm and so right in the center of that labyrinth that you 
I'm speaking from my own experience, but also from what I've heard other people say, is you have to urge yourself to go back out. Thanks, Kay. Now let's take a look at what those students did in Chicago. T-shirts were all laid out on the floor in as close to a circular shape as possible. A rope was taped to the floor in the center to be used as a measuring device so that all the pathways within the labyrinth would be the same width. The lines of the labyrinth were drawn onto the t-shirts with fabric paint. Students came to walk the labyrinth and somewhere in their path they would pick a spot or multiple spots to paint their foot and stamp the t-shirts. Dalton, one of the students that participated, had a pretty cool experience. So now we're going to hear from him. Hi, I'm Dalton. Um, I came from William & Mary, which is in Williamsburg, Virginia. I don't know if this is true or not, but I feel like a lot of people focus on the, the getting to the center of the labyrinth. And I was very focused on like, you know, getting to the center, but wanting to like leave again. Um, because you know, you come into the center, you experience God, and you, you feel j joyful, I guess, and light, and you want to take, take it out with you back out into the world. So when I was walking the prayer labyrinth, I was looking for the, or trying to find a spot for my foot, but I was <laughs> prayerfully considering it, because by that time I was like, I felt like I should have my foot pointed in the leaving direction. And so when I turned around and was walking on my way out, I uh, was looking for that spot, but I just continued to focus and you know, think about bringing, trying to bring God's light out. Um, actually, this like, whole conference is like the prayer of Byron. We've been coming together closer and closer and closer and closer, and now it's time to recede back out into the world and you know you don't we don't want to lose what we had in the center we want to bring that to the rest of the world but thinking about the the shirts and looking at them i i think it would have also been really powerful to put my footprint next to somebody else's but in the opposite direction so that way um you don't know which way you're going and i feel like that's oftentimes the case with with our faith, you know, experiencing and and uh, helping to facilitate the experience of God's peace and joy. You don't know which direction you're going most of the time. So I thought that would actually be kind of a cool symbolic message to to have on the t-shirt. So I can only cross my fingers and hope I can one like that. After everyone had walked through, the t-shirts were left to dry overnight and then given out to each student at the gathering. The cool thing is, the labyrinth didn't exist as one piece anymore, but many, as students hopped into vans and planes and trains and traveled across the country, so did their labyrinth. It stretched and continues to stretch around the world with each and every step those students take. Now it's your turn. I challenge you to create a prayer labyrinth to help people find their Jerusalem, their center, on your campus, or in your context. You don't need to use t-shirts or footprints. It can be simple or complex. You choose what to do. Don't forget to take pictures or video of your campus canvassing. We'd love to hear about your experience and share it with other viewers. You can email us at tinypianoclub@gmail.com at gmail.com to share or if you have questions. Thanks for watching Tiny Piano Club's newest series, Campus Canvas Challenge. Subscribe to the, subscribe? Yes, please, please subscribe. Subscribe in order to catch the latest challenges. May your theology art, art, theology, theology art, bring you joy and bring joy to your community. Happy arting!